right now we're nebulizing normal saline, but we have come up with a potential option here to prevent the flow of nebulized air out into the out into the community here, out into the room. So basically, let's see the smoke coming out of that thing. It's working good. There we go. And that's just saline smoking away there. What did you guys set up here? Um, so we took the normal nebulization equipment that just comes in this setup, which normally would be hooked to the patient as such. Unfortunately, this comes with the downside of that this is open to the air every time patient exhales or just shooting droplets right out the other end. So we hypothesized that we might be able to close this utilizing one of these viral filters that was commonly used on ventilators and then sealing it with a bag valve mask right there. So we just took the mouthpiece off, inserted our mask piece, and then inserted a viral filter onto the exhalation aspect of this nebulizer. Because per our respiratory text, we could not take this and just place this right on the T valve, because then you would not obtain a adequate amount of reservoir to make the nebulization functional. So now yeah, so the patient has to breathe they have to have the albuterol or whatever you're using. A nebulized droplet, there has to be a volume for them to breathe in, otherwise they're not receiving benefit of care. Yeah, yeah. So now with this setup, we have our nebulized material with positive pressure inlet from the wall going to our nebulizer. Setting it, running this just like you would any other nebulizer you see we're receiving adequate amount of aerosolized droplet and so let's see then you put that on your face so and now, let's see if, if if any smoke is escaping yeah so a good tight seal with the mask and uh, is the trick here if you don't have a tight seal then obviously the air is going to be going out into the atmosphere and of course I imagine we'd have to look at it. This might be able to be adapted to a mask with head straps. You see this just clips on. This comes on some masks, this adapter piece, which then you could then utilize. Of course, I don't have my shears on me, but there are shears here. Then you would just take a little nick in it. You would just you know, make sure you have leave margins. Take a little nick, just like so. And you would have, this will be on the patient, and then you would, of course, put some tension on it. And then you could... You'd need two of them, actually, though. You would need two, but at the same time, this, whole, this is very much on my face. And again, I actually just poked this through without even needing a scissor. Yeah. And then you would just, again, you would, on the bottom end, pop it through just like so. Then you could make this a very improvised CPAP. Again, put some tension on here. That's a very tight seal because I'm going to occlude my exhalation for it. Yeah. How's it feel? I put this on pretty tightly, to be honest. I don't know if a, if a pediatric patient would tolerate that tightness. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the same time, I can just pop this loose, adjust the tension, and show it how good it feels. And readjust it then. And just readjust it. That was actually very easy, and this is far yeah. more. This and, is and, and, and this is something we came up in the last five minutes, but there's got to be other straps oh, yeah. and other alternatives. But that's perfect because it just it just like pokes through right there. Yeah, it was very and easy. Yeah, very very easy to do. I just self-adjusted it pretty very easily. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. We're having too much fun.